I think it depends which earnings you're looking at. I think we all have gone into this quarter's earnings and are holding our breath to say, what are these companies going to say? And I think, Frank, this comes down to execution. You have, you know, Apple being able to thread the needle in China. You have Microsoft doing really well. You have, you know, Amazon with advertising growth. On the flip side, you have a total whiff from Intel. So all of these companies are dealing with the exact same set of macro circumstances. I think this comes down to execution. But once again, the broad market generally, and especially the Nasdaq, has really made a nice run here. And we'll, we'll see, though, if we can hang on to it. I do think investors need to still stay cautious because we still have high inflation. We have taxes coming our way, and there's a lot of uncertainty still in the macro environment. Yeah, certainly a lot of uncertainty, but the first month of the third quarter, getting off to a pretty good start, Jim. Yeah, and you know what? You said it simply and elegantly, not as bad as expected, Frank. It's really that simple. Uh, Bryn, by the way, you're totally right that this is a company-by-company company, uh, uh, reporting season, but going above what you just said, if I told the two of you and, and uh, Jason and Seach that this week we were going to have misses <laughs> from Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, Google, and that the Fed was going to raise 75 basis points, and we're going to get two quarters in a row of negative GDP, what would you have told me the markets are going to do? Lower. Exactly. <laughs> markets are up big, right? And what that means is just simply it's a tone change. It's a sentiment change. Things were too negative. It's that simple. Now, by the way, the extrapolation of this is not that we're off to the races and we're going to go straight higher from here. We're going to be bouncy for a while. And the one thing I continue to look for is inflation to break. I've never seen an economic series go as long with uh, disappointing expectations as this series has gone on. It's been a year since you've had a benign inflation report. Mm -hmm. When you get one, I think the market then will start to get some serious stability behind it. I'm not saying we're going back to the lows. You know I'm optimistic. I'm speaking to the camera, to the viewers. Everyone knows I'm optimistic. What I'm saying is bumpy for the next few weeks, maybe a couple of months. But again, by year end, we should be through a lot of this garbage and feeling a heck of a lot better. All right, I'm going to talk into the camera to Rob Seachin right now. Rob, what's your take on some of the moves we're seeing in the markets right now? Also, a really strong month, um, you know, not historic by any means, but <laughs> for in some cases, when you look at the Nasdaq and the S&P, best month in about a year. No question. And, I, you know, the Fed's comments yesterday were very, very significant. We think it was a soft pivot. Um, and it's in response to economic conditions, which continue to slow very rapidly um, and, and have been volatile since the onset of the pandemic. I think in response to the Fed's comments yesterday, we saw nominal and real interest rates move down. Um, we're more convinced that we've seen a peak in headline inflation, not so much that we've seen and not as confident that we've seen a top in core inflation. Um, you know, the Fed's maintaining their longer term guidance that they want to move past neutral. So that's really still a, a restrictive environment. But I want to get back to something that Jim said that's very important. Um, Microsoft and Google reported earnings announcements Tuesday after the close. Both companies, and in fact, Amazon and others, missed top and bottom line. And, you know, the stocks went up. And that shows you the positioning of investors. And as an investor, you need to consistently ask yourself, what is priced into markets? And it's clear that while we may not get that capitulative flush that we were all looking for at a bottom, we have seen it in parts of the market like tech. And so as we look forward, we prefer tech. We prefer oil because of the way they behaved here this week. We prefer oil and energy stocks, and we may have already seen the bottom in some other sectors and such. I would like to make one more point, if I can, Frank. Um, we've seen a very meaningful move in yields. The two-year was in an uptrend. It's now starting to reverse that. And the two-year is the best signal for when the Fed is going to pivot from hiking to cutting rates. We're seeing action in the 10-year as well. And so that is why we viewed this as a soft pivot, one that you have to pay attention to. It moves us from cautious to cautiously optimistic, but it does not change our positioning in that quality is still our focus. Because when we think there are storms out there, we want to make sure that we're continuing to protect the ball as we play the game. All right, there we go. Uh, Rob Seachum, quite a few metaphors there. But basically, I want to toss things over to you, Jason Snipe. Um, I know you are kind of agreeing with uh, Jim and with Bryn that earnings, they just weren't as bad as thought. Absolutely. And I think, Frank, there's clearly there's been a bias to the downside. You know, 
EPS growth is, I mean, there's been about a 71 percent beat thus far throughout Indians. And, and then we're, we've seen, obviously, all these companies, the mega cat tech companies, that have performed better than expected. Yes, as, as Ross uh, mentioned, there's slight misses. Uh, here and there. But, you know, if we're looking at cloud growth at Azure, it's still growing at 40 percent. We're looking at AWS on Amazon, still up 30 plus percent. So these names have, have weathered the storm fairly well. A lot of free cash flow, their cash flow juggernauts. And I think that's, that's how the market has really responded. And then to, to Rob's point on, on the Fed, you know, the Fed has remained positioned on just being data dependent. You know, the, there, there will be an end in time in terms of hiking you know, moving forward so that this is not an autopilot scenario. So I think that the market responded very well to that piece. And, and I think that's where we are, you know, expectations of earnings being a little bit better than we had all anticipated.